All right, welcome back to Portland Paper. We're hanging out for Modern Mondays here at Guardian Games. We're starting off round number one of four with a matchup of, it looks like we have Q matchup card. Zeke hanging out and playing Boros Kiki Blade and Alicia on Yagmoth. Uh, pretty cool, two, uh, two sort of creature value decks that have a combo. I would say Alicia is more, more a little bit all in on the combo, although it's still creatures that can attack. Um, and uh, Zeke is on uh, you know value creatures uh, with a combo finish. So Boros Kiki Blade is a spicy title for a deck. What are your thoughts on um, what we might see in this deck? Uh, I'm thinking there might be Blood Moons hanging out uh, and a bit of a, like a lockout sort of package around that. Uh, then you're going to have uh, Stoneforge, probably Batter Skull is uh, in there. Um, maybe various other equipments. Sophie is pretty strong right now. And uh, then you have the high end of uh, uh, Kiki Jiki copying uh, perhaps a Village Bell Ringer is going to be my guess. Uh, we'll start off with turn one, give her ruins for Zeke, and the uh, Ragavan Killer, turn one, Young Wolf for Alicia. No Ragavans to be killed here, unfortunately. Yeah, I do feel like the uh, how good Yogmoth is as a deck depends on how much Ragavan is played in the format. Uh, I think that's definitely a little bit true. Um, Solitude that I imagine is in Zeke's deck, yes. So here we will see Solitude, and then also there's Ephemerate in hand, so um, yes. <laughs> All right, looks like it's a Felidar Guardian um, as the combo piece there. These Maybe are I was, I was getting a little bit old school with Village Bell Ringer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is about the best, the best value you can hope for playing the Kiki Blade deck as far as... Um, getting the solitude in there. Grabbing two undying creatures feels very, very good. And then a lifelink attacker doesn't hurt as well. And we're choosing not to ephemerate. We're just going to let that stay in exile. So the solitude is well protected. Zeke having the uh, advantage board presence here, but n just a single card left in hand. I want to say it's a Thraben Inspector. Uh, the thing about Yogmoth is you can do you can do some damage, but uh, if the Yogmoth player is able to get the combo online, it kind of doesn't matter if you've done some initial damage. Although this, is, this Imperial Recruiter should help quite a bit. It is also pretty important um, with the Ogmoth to manage your life total because every time you're drawing a card, it is going to cost you a life. Um, and there's there's certain instances where you, if you are close to having more life than your opponent, you could do some tricksy things. Uh, but you know, if you're just doing the damage combo, you want to you want to have more um, significantly more life to play with. So once you start getting down there, it gets a bit iffy. Yeah, that is one of those things that's often overlooked playing against the Yogmoth deck is, um, like you're saying, damage damage dealt to the player can actually really save your bacon. All right, we did fetch a Stone Forge uh, off of the Recruiter, and we're just given the Solitude Pro Green, rambling in again, gaining life. And we're getting a sort of fire knife, so main deck sword for Zeke. And we're courting for zero for Alicia, so just getting the one of probably of the Dryad Arbor. It's not that's not a green sun zenith. <laughs> it's a little bit more costly to, to go get a, a land. Absolutely. So chat wondering if Ephemerate should have landed in the yard after it was not rebounded. Let's take a quick look at Ephemerate. It does not. It, it stays, hangs out in exile. Um, it's exiled when it resolves, and then uh, you can choose not to cast it. 
Right, and the important part being you may cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. If you choose not to, it will remain in exile. If I'm right, see, I, I feel like Zeke's deck is probably on the Fury, Solitude, Stoneforge package. If I'm right, it's great in, in that. Um, and then you just have a combo, combo kill. Yeah, Kiki Jiki quite solid in this deck, although the three red does seem like it could be a bit of a challenge. All right, there we have the namesake card, Alicia casting Yogmoth. So Zeke with a huge life advantage here, which is going to be helpful. I think it will be difficult without a blood artist um, out for Alicia to be able to just straight up combo off here. Um, however, we can choose to draw basically one card per life if we want to here for a moment. And we can put some negative one, negative one counters on creatures as well. Yeah, Thunderwonk, that's correct. If you do choose to cast it again from exile with the rebound, it will end up in the graveyard. So Zeke lets the Imperial Recruiter go to the yard. Uh, Alicia's now set up to essentially pay a life to kind of swap the plus one, plus one counters, the Undying uh the plus one plus one counters from Undying between the Strangle Root Geist and the Young Wolf to be able to draw cards per life spent with the Yawgmoth. Yeah, so I think we need to hit untapped land here um, and then a cord. And so, we could, yeah, Alicia could cord for Blood Artist and then be able to uh, keep drawing cards um, without a uh, going negative in life here. I don't think we're going to be able to combo and win this turn um, for Alicia. The gears are turning here, but um, yeah, I think that's sort of the best, best you can hope for. It might be worth waiting till next turn so you can do, um, have some potential blocks going on. Let's take a quick look at the namesake card for Alicia's deck, Yawgmoth Thran Position. Protection from humans, the often forgot about text. Not going to be super relevant in this game, as I believe we have three core and an elemental on the field. However, it would have protected from the Imperial Recruiter. All right, we do have a pass back there, and I think Alicia recognizing that there's no way to combo off this turn, and you're perhaps going to save some life um, being able to potentially block and then untap and have, have mana to do a bigger cord for next turn. Of note, this is interesting in that Zeke had used, had held up one giver of runes, which protected potentially the next offensive use of Yawgmoth um, if Alicia had decided to try and take one of Zeke's creatures off the board. Probably Zeke wanting to make sure that Stoneforge Mystic survives. Um, to be able to throw Cauldra into play. All right, we have a Cauldra that is into play now. Um, so we're going to swing. And, and the important part about how the um, Cauldra trigger works is it enters the battlefield attached to the germ token. So, you know, if you're on Alicia's side, you're kind of wondering, like, is, is there any moment where I could maybe kill the germ? But, of course, the germ is a 0-0, zero, zero, so if it... Uh, if it didn't enter attached, it would die naturally. All right, just taking the damage here. And so, yeah, depending on the contents of Alicia's hand, we're, we're going to be able to spin, spin the wheel a couple times and see what, see what we draw. Um, there's defi definitely potential to, co potential to combo here, um, especially if there's a cord in hand. Do we have a cord in hand? See another Yawgmoth for sure. Looks like maybe a fetch, maybe a Misty. Yeah, Zeke not having red up, um, I think allows Alicia to 
go down to one, potentially, to then try to find the combo. Nope, no cord yet. Looks like a wall of roots and then a couple lands. Still going. Strangle root geist is the pickup. And we'll go down to one. Finds another Yogmoth. Right. Tough sledding. So at this point, you oh, there wow. we, we found it. Found it off wow. the um, found it off the horizon lands. Really heads up for Alicia to recognize this as the pivotal turn that, you know, when, when you're a combo player and you can recognize, like, it's time to go, uh, that's how you win these really tight games. So can Alicia I, recognizing it is time to go. But here's the challenge, Trav. I'm curious that she's just cording for what looks like two here, where I thought it would be the cord for three. Were you not expecting the blood artist? So the, the blood okay. artist would be two. Yeah. But here's the challenge, is to use Yagma's ability, you yep. need to pay one life. So if you get Blood Artist here, you still need to find a way to get one of your creatures killed. That's why I thought Cord was going to be for three. Um, there's the ETB uh, gain drain creature that has Undying that then you can cycle when you have another Undying creature. And so then that... But you need the life to pay every time you're trying to cycle it. Yeah, That's but it would issue. come into play and you would gain life. Uh, it's not a drain gain. Oh, it's just a drain? It's just a drain. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, Prosperous Innkeeper. So, Prosperous Innkeeper will give us a treasure and will gain us a life when a creature enters the battlefield. So, we have access to a Wall of Roots here. So, treasure plus birds will put Wall of Roots into play or Dryad Arbor. Looks like we'll go, we're going for Geist. That's going to gain a life. So we're going to stabilize here. So Alicia explaining that we can now start to draw cards while maintaining the life total, which will get creatures untapped. So any undying creature is going to end up untapped as Alicia is able to continually draw cards while maintaining life total. So now we find out, is there a blood artist in the deck? Or... Um, I guess we just, if we can hit the drain, I guess we, we probably need another cord to hit the drain creature because it takes three black. Let's see, chat help. What is the, uh, what is the creature? Geralt's messenger. Yeah, there we go. So yeah. the messenger, the, the challenge here is you don't want to draw the messenger. So I think... I think you need to. Oh shit! You're right. Yeah, so we'd already played the land for the turn, so at least you're not able to play another one. So I think you can draw your library right now, but I don't know how you're gonna get enough to cord for two. Well, yeah. So I think we. I think you're kind of locked out unless there's something I'm missing here. But I think uh, can't can't cast the blood artist if you draw it, and then can't cord. Can't we cord? You can only cord for one. I th we should be able to cord for two. It looks like a treasure plus four green creatures should be able to cord for two. Is that? Oh, that's a treasure, not a food. Okay, there we go. So I'm I'm a little surprised that Alicia. It it depends on whether Giralf's messenger is in the deck. That's kind of the the crux of this. So Alicia's drawing a bunch of cards, but in my mind, you probably should be drawing one at a time if the messenger's in the deck. Oh, Chad's recognizing a cool line. Um, if you uh, hmm. if you draw your deck and you have an endurance in the main deck, you can go to discard uh, or clean up, Ooh. and then endurance in your opponent's uh, in your opponent's upkeep, and uh, then at that point uh, you could cord for two if you put Blood Artist back in your deck and combo off. That is awesome. Although I don't think Blood Artist ever hit the yard, did it? Uh, clean up. Oh, I see. Yep. So yeah, so then you discard the Blood Artist um, in clean up, and then you're going to Endurance okay. right now. So we're in upkeep. This is where we're going to see exactly the line that Chad is mentioning. Okay. I'm going to target myself. I'm going to target myself. How are you casting your... 
Well, I'm going to take a little bit of credit for that one, too. <laughs> that's, that's, an, that's an assist there. Yeah, that is a great line. So Zeke taking the time to look through the deck. So this is where we find out. Okay, the there's, there's the cutthroat. So Zeke clearly identifying this is the important thing. There is also a messenger in the deck. But I guess that... So it, hmm. Could we have just endurance... I would, this is the safest way to do it because uh, then you make sure that you're going to have that in your graveyard because you do your deck and clean up. So there's no, yeah, I, th I think this is okay. the, the correct and really uh, smart heads up line. Okay. And this doesn't even allow Zeke to have a draw step. So Zeke with no, no hope to be able to draw a solitude to disrupt the combo at that point. I was really well navigated by Alicia playing. I mean, definitely playing to all your outs there with uh, the Horizon Land drawing you the cord that you needed. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, you you really do feel... It, it just makes you feel so good as a player when you know that you're maximizing your outs and for some reason just hitting it on the last possible out just has... It just feels a little bit better. Nurtured peatland. Nurturing peatland? That's the Nurturing horizon land. For Nurturing peatland, yeah. There we are. All right, headed to sideboard. I uh, was proactive here, and I've got a list of what's in Zeke's sideboard. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on top of things. So it looks like we've got in Zeke's sideboard three copies of Kiki Jiki, three copies of Magus of the Moon, three copies of Rest in Peace, uh, Thalia. Big Thalia, uh, Burrington Forge Tender, um, Archon of Endurance, a Skyclave Apparition, and an Avalanche Riders. Interesting. I mean, Rest in Peace is the very obvious call here. Yeah, Rest in Peace, great way to disrupt the combo. Okay, there's actually Thalia Guardian of Thraven there, so not, not Big Thalia, just, just, just normal, old school Thalia. Yeah, uh, rest in peace for sure. It depends if you have bad cards in the deck. Um, I don't think Zeke has a lot of bad cards in the deck, really. So I could see something like uh, Magus coming in to be a bit cheeky. Um, How important do you feel like the givers are going to be against a deck like Yawgmoth? There's a part of me that's actually fine with um, taking some givers out of the deck. Because I'm not really expecting Alicia to threaten my early plays. Yes, uh, Yawgmoth not playing a lot of removal in in the main or sideboard. I Until mean, the Yawgmoth lands. Correct, yeah. yeah. The removal is, is part of the creature package. Um, so I could see that being a flex slot. I don't know enough of Zeke's main deck to know what to board out, but you know, all removal is going to be good against the deck. Um, and yeah, definitely rest in peace is like the r one of the reasons why you play that in your sideboard is these graveyard combo decks. So Alicia's probably going to bring in some amount of uh, enchantment uh, destroy effects. Um, they are, I know that uh, Yawgmoth is playing. Uh, the name is escaping me, but it's a two drop that you can cord for that you can sacrifice to destroy an artifact. Uh, and it's one of the cards that does a whole daytime, nighttime thing. And when it flips, uh, you can destroy two artif artifacts on attack. Do you remember the name of that card, Ian? Or is that Not regional? Not this exact too, moment. Too I know which card you're talking about, yeah. but yeah. The chat will know it. All right. Shuffled up, deciding if we got some keepers. Uh, what do I see? What do we see in Zeke's hand? Can we get a Outland Liberator? Get a Thanks, little chat. hand cam. All right, Zeke's keeping a hand. Igonjo, two fetches. Looks like the giver stayed in. Looks like maybe a couple of wall of omens, possibly. Yep. Curious what what is 
in the rest of Zeke's hand. Al Alicia played a hierarch turn one. And draw off wall. I think we've got another wall, a seasoned pyromancer, and a recruiter there. Yep. All right, we have a slew of creatures there. We've got a wall of roots, uh, land drop, two young wolves. So they're getting set up for a pretty big cord here. So Zeke with a solid hand, but again, no ability to interact with what Alicia is doing. And that's the danger of not having a Fury or Solitude, which are both fantastic in this matchup. All right. Uh, and of note, Recruiter cannot get either of those two cards. So I do also want to mention, I really appreciate uh, playing, playing someone like Zeke, uh, where you're able to verbalize shortcutting, um, where we're fetching, we're playing Recruiter, and then we're getting a creature off the Recruiter, but we're gonna do that all in one go. Um, where, you know, a lot of times we'll see someone fetch, that'll resolve, they'll present the deck, then they'll play the recruiter, but we just saved, uh, you know, Zeke saved us one and a half, two minutes of game game time. So Zeke's gonna grab a Felidar Guardian here, which is half of the combo element in the deck. Okay. Um, a fine card to get, but again, like we're at that same stage where Zeke has no cards that are interacting with what Alicia's doing. And Alicia's potentially moving at a quicker clip here, so that's the danger. Looks like Alicia has an Eldritch Evolution that we're taking a look at. Going to run it out using the mana from the wall. Get rid of the wall. I can only imagine that we're going to see Yawgmoth here. That is usually the uh, answer to the question, what are you getting with Eldritch Evolution in this deck? All right, uh, there's potential to draw a bunch of cards here. And Alicia with the life total advantage at the moment as well. And I believe we have not played our land drop for turn. Okay, so there it is. Dryad Arbor gonna be the land drop for turn. Going to make the giver even smaller. To actually get that off the board, Alicia would have to actually sacrifice one of the resources in play. Now that there is a uh, undying counter on one of the wolves, it's no longer free, quote, free to get the giver off the board. And we have a lot of, a lot of draws to potentially uh, get the cord here. I actually think there is a cord in hand. And we're paying four life, drawing four cards. Tough to see what was drawn. Um, we're gonna pass. Full grip of cards in hand. So it looks like Alicia can combo um, whenever, whenever Zeke makes a move. Um, was maybe. It might be waiting for Zeke to initiate something here. There is a window of whenever Alicia does go for cord for if Zeke had something like a solitude to then take out the Yawgmoth. There is, I don't believe Zeke currently has solitude in hand. There is a Shatter Skull smashing, but with Zeke now tapping low, I don't even think Shatter Skull is an option. And also, I don't really think that Zeke has the mana to meaningfully Shatter Skull anything on the, on the board at the moment. 
I think you would have to take out the Yawgmoth. All right, Stoneforge, probably getting a Caldera that's not really going to do much right now. That is the case. All right, pass my turn, get untapped with Alicia, drew the Cutthroat. So no reason to not play that. All right, just have the combo there. 